And to be clear, we're going on now. Uh, I believe this started on se- Sunday, September 29th. Yes. So we're going on uh, eight, nine, ten days of this. Um, and so they've actually closed Rockdale County Schools until October the 18th. They are doing virtual learning. Hmm. So now it's healthy, no- it's healthy for us, but not for the kids, because yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Um, hey, Jordan, I wanna, I w- Jordan, I, could I jump in and make a very important point? Uh, just yeah. quickly, Madeline, very important to get a message out on the Facebook group and everyone listening in Conyers. Save your furnace filters, your car filters, seal them up in blags. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't get to everybody. I didn't know this was going to be so significant, but save everything you can. And um, especially, you know, if, if, if you got a side of a house, uh, don't clean it and because we're going to have to swab the sides like I was doing with some of the windshields. So get that out. People want to preserve in the ash in your yards uh, before you have Biolab uh, come clean it up. Seal some up in plastic bags and, and put it away because this is evidence you are going to need. You were down there. Uh, you know, you try to do as much as you can in a few days. You tested a couple homes, but you had hooked up with a um, business owner who his business was right next to ground zero and he gave you permission to do some independent testing. But then when you approached his business, somehow, um, I guess the company BioLab had hired glorified stop, you know, glorified traffic cops to stop the business owner from going to his own private property. Uh, I just want to play the clip and then you can explain it after. Colin, okay. if you could play that clip. Okay. Shit come out of the wet house, going into a storage uh, facility. Hey, it's our uh, friend from yesterday. Well, hey, friend. <laughs> hey, hey. Listen, it's I us again. I'm actually like trying to get into this Just place. Full disclosure, so I've got. Uh, I'll call you back. I've got attorney uh, David Graham I'm on, the phone, I'm on the phone with us right now on speakerphone. Okay. Are you, are you with the response group? Uh, I'm with one of the parties, yes, but I'm not going to give out my information. They're going to have to go through the fire department for any information. We know you guys are doing a job. I just want to document this. So we're being, we're on a public road being blocked from this business owner doing an insurance investigation for his contamination by people that will not give us their names or identities. Okay, everything needs to go through the fire department. So... uh, I, I cannot release this until the fire department says so. You may you gotta film this. I mean we need the identity. This is gonna go this is going to court. Well we're on a public roadway. Okay, we, then you're gonna have to go over here and she can to you. we can legally film you. You're on a public roadway. Okay. And this cloak and dagger stuff is this is not legal what's going on. It is Again, totally go illegal. Talk to the police. I cannot talk about anything going on here, period. So what authority do you have to stop us from going from in there? The, you have to speak to the police. Then why aren't the police here? Why isn't the firemen here? Because they're jumped all around here. They're all here. They just moved from up here. There's a cop. So How come none of you have masks on if it's so unsafe? There is none of you have masks on. It's, the cops don't have there, masks on. There is on. a cop right over there, so I'm going to stop this conversation. There's a police department right over there at the sign-in on this other road. Those are who you need to speak with. Not us. Well, guess what? I'm not talking to him. I'm talking to you guys here. If you have any conversation, it's got to go to the So what if we just keep driving down there? The police you can will come drive, You can go wherever you'd like. I'm not going to stop you, but I will go get that cop and I'm going to get you guys. <clears throat> I got to I gotta, keep you I know. Trouble. Look, I got to roll the dice, dude. 25 years. If my business goes under, that's 30 families that lose their jobs. I understand. So if that means I go to jail, then I guess I'm going to go to jail. Though. We're not intentionally giving you a hard time. No, we know listen, you're I, job. I, I, We're listen, not giving I understand you're outside of it. We're just under certain directives. We've got a lawyer that's, that's telling me to document everything. So we're I, documenting it. I understand. Trust me, I understand. I go through this a lot. As of right now, I cannot tell you that you can go through So, Chris, what do you want to do? You want to keep driving? Just drive. I don't have a choice. I'm going to lose my business. I'll follow you. One day, Sean, we're going to have a beer and laugh about this. Yeah, it'll be wicked fun. <laughs> I understand. It's just for y'all. That's what I said. Let me add some context to that, Jordan. So, Well, like- uh, first, 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 let's explain the who, what, when, why. So was that near BioLab where the fire was? That's correct. That was and you, right were with, you, were with, you were with a business owner whose business is right down there. And that um, 
yellow vest guy was working for BioLab? You know, I can tell you from experience, he, he works for the response uh, group. And the response group is a contractor like CTEH, that the billion dollar company BioLab hires to intimidate and basically break the law. And we had so seen just, a copy just, so, of- just, just so people know, CTEH uh, is kind of the go-to corporate cleanup company. Uh, and what I mean by that is they do testing uh, they did testing in um, East Palestine after the detonation, and they magically find nothing wrong. So when he uh, says this group is like uh, CTEH, that, that's what he's referring to. Go ahead. Yeah, I just got tipped off. CTEH is on the ground, and, and people in Conyers can expect within two to three weeks Biolab to start pretending independent CTEH, which they're not independent at all. CTEH is going to start saying everything's fine. It's ubiquitous in the environment. You have allergies. So be ready for that. We can counter them with with independent testing. And this is part of, you know, whether it's the response group and these contractors or ex EPA people selling out, like we know did in East Palestine, working for the billion dollar company. It's not just BioLab, it's these contractors taking the money and being complicit in violating people's constitutional rights. And just like the lawyer told me, the cops never showed up and the cops said it is illegal. The cops never showed up and they threaten people like you're going to be arrested. And I was able to complete all the testing. And that owner is, you know, he's, he's been in the news, Chris Lovejoy, uh, and, and uh, it's Surf Pro. He's right behind, um, right behind BioLab. And also, I mean, obviously we don't know, but if they're not shutting down business, are they not, they're not shutting down businesses in that area, are they? They've shut down all the businesses in that industrial park and they're blocking access. Only now okay. there's another very Only. I haven't posted everything yet. Only on that side of the road. Everything on the opposite side is open. Okay. Here's another very important point. On Sunday, we were able to get in because there was just a cop there, and the cop admitted on Sunday, I legally cannot stop you. So what you heard is an admission of a crime by the contractor operating at BioLoad. You heard in that video an admission of a crime that you will see in court eventually. So on Sunday, we got in to the retaining pond near Ground Zero, and we tested next to a dead frog. I also tested uh, a windshield. I haven't posted a lot of this stuff, but I will be. The windshield that deposited everything. One of the reasons why BioLoad- uh, Co Colin, uh, Colin, Colin, I think we have images of the dead frog as he's talking, if you want to show some of that. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and one of the reasons BioLab wants to illegal stop, illegally stop people from uh, is the testing. And there you have an AC intake. Uh, that's within probably a half a mile of ground zero. You can see the deposits. This is like ga ga it's gathering evidence at a crime scene. So I, we're, we're testing for the full spectrum of chemicals. And remember, you can't find what you don't look for. So for those of you watching and you see these deposits on surfaces, and that's what I just showed you. That's a piece of the ash. Uh, picked up from Shana's yard that shows the the polystyrene, and I and think go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I think it's coming up. You're going to see the picture of the frog and the water we took right next to it. Now, where the frog was is within 1,500 feet. That is in the retaining pond, um, and we were able to get those water samples on Sunday. They're at the lab now, being processed, and again. The full spectrum of chemicals from dioxins to the semi-volatile organic compounds. And there you see pictures I've, I've gotten from residents of the plume basically invading their airspace and depositing chemicals, you know, in their yards, in their soil, on their surfaces. And this is why I say driving, this is your, your air filters in your cars are going to be good for evidence. You should change them and seal them, put them away uh, for a later day. I haven't even changed so, my filter get... because of the smoke and stuff still goes. So let me ask you, uh, first I'll ask you folks in Conyers. I don't really know what you are politically. It doesn't matter sure. to me, but you got to you gotta assume, I mean, most of you just expect if something like this happens, the government's going to do the right thing. You know, they're going to communicate with you. They're not going <laughs> to... Not, you're not going to block blocking business owners from trying to do independent testing. Uh, they're going to try to explain to you what's going on. Uh, it, it seems like very little of those things are going on in your local government. Uh, you know, Shana, Madeline, tell me 
what does it seem? Does it seem like they're trying to hide something from you guys? I, I can I can jump in and say, I mean, it was very early on that I think we all realized that was not going to be the case here. I I didn't get a, uh, Shane, I can speak for you, but I, I didn't get a notification. The alert didn't go out until 1030. The fire started at 5 a.m. So it took them five plus hours even to just notify the community of what was going on. From there, the communication got more and more sporadic. Um, as far as, you know, if they are intentionally hiding or something, I can't speak to any level of certainty. I can say that there's been an incredible amount of evasiveness in their responses. And in addition to that, our chairman, um, Oz Nesbitt, you know, has continually said in reference to Biolab when asked questions, you know, we're working with Biolab, we're working with Biolab. He didn't actually speak anything out against Biolab until finally yesterday and still will not actively say, you know, we are not allowing Biolab to reopen in this community. Um, I know they've made an, you know, he has spoken to that they've made an enormous event, an investment in this community financially. Um, and so it certainly raises those questions. And for context, Shana, this BioLab is one of the bigger employers in the community. So they employ a lot of people. And they've also had two other fires. And there's no reason they have a wet sprinkler system in that building when it should be an Ansel system when it's a dry system. Why do they have water coming out of that system when it should be a dry Ansel system? For any, any, did you put water over a grease fire? No. It's the same. Basically, it's not rocket science.